Alright folks, it's been a while, and I told you last time I'd show you the Delta Mark II, uh, also known as the Falcon Wing. Um, problem is, uh, I didn't have my camera with, um, so I, I couldn't record the flight. It was kind of une uneventful anyways, I just got a new camera, so I'm going to, you know, go ahead and make a video about it. Um, here it is. Uh, I told you about uh, making it out of new material, out of the Hobby Lobby foam. Uh, what I didn't realize is that foam, yes, it's three times better quality, but it is three times heavier. And I only realized this until I was about halfway into the build. And I was like, you know, my motor is pretty powerful, so I guess it can handle the weight. We'll see how it goes. I, you know, I'm halfway in. Might as well finish it and see how it goes. Um, came out with a pretty good result. Uh, unfortunately, the weight was a big problem, and uh, I'll tell you why. Well, first, um, let me show you uh, what I did differently. Of course, I had the longer fuselage with the wing fillets, so it looks kind of like a F-16 Falcon wing. Um, so basically, uh, the same kind of bay deal, but a little bit be uh, better designed for receiver. I took all the electronics out, used it for uh, my Delta Mark III, which will be in the next video. Um, so the servos went underneath the KF airfoil. I should mention that first. <laughs> the KF airfoil. And that's what what gave it its stability and it actually flew like an airplane. Uh, with this the performance really improved. The problem was the weight. Because of the weight it was extremely underpowered with the um, with the motor I had. Um, but anyways, I'll get to that. So the battery I cut it in a little area here. So the battery really fit in there and it didn't pop out this time. I made a little notch. Let's see if I can... Well, okay. I made a little notch right there. So I had a rubber band that went from here to here. So it held the battery in really well. So the hatch didn't pop out. I used the magnets again. Well, I took them out actually. And I have the tabs. A tab system. I'm moving this all around so you can't see it. <laughs> So that's the hatch. Okay, I have the air scoops. This is the four, four twelve. I also had the rubber band system. Uh, that didn't work out so well. I'll get to that. Again, the I had the um, the two uh, steel rods going through, and the rubber band held the motor on. The motor is now on the Delta Mark III. Uh, along with all the electronics, even the control horns and push rods and everything. Um, of course, larger tail helped, I think. Um, cooler looking little, what, what do you call it? Um, you know, I don't remember, uh, st uh, whatever. The, uh, servo fairings, right. I made a little extension here a little bit, uh, cover to that so it looked a little bit cooler. Unfortunately when I had to take the servos out I had to rip it apart. I didn't count on that. That was pretty dumb on my part. But anyways, I also had the tubes in there, the plastic tubes, and I had to remove those and put them in the uh, Delta Mark III. I don't waste anything. Uh, this won't be flying again anytime soon so it doesn't matter. What else? All right, so that's about it for the modifications. Um, what happened with this plane? Well, it, uh, on the first flight, uh, it was only one flight, actually. Um, I had it on low throws, of course, uh, because it was the main flight. You want to do that on your main flight, do low throws, throws to, just to be safe. 
um, and it was it was doing very wide turns and everything. It was very sluggish in the air. Uh, I didn't do anything crazy. After doing a couple, uh, you know, loops or, or uh, turns around the airfield, I went away, went ahead and got it up in the up in the air, uh, pretty high, and tried a, a full loop. It was a very big loop. I barely got over it, um, but again, because of the combination of low throws and the low power, it, it didn't have a very good time. Um, and recovering out of that, uh, out of that loop, I think I tried to roll it over um, and pull up, you know, get level and pull up. The deal was that it, the throws were so low that it tip stalled and it was so dang heavy it didn't have much uh, power to just compensate just get back up in the air that it just went in and uh, dang thing was so heavy that even though it was highly reinforced if you look in there I had tons and tons of just foam and I just layered on just tons of foam. It was really stupid of me to use that style of reinforcement. I mean, I don't know if you can even see how much... Yeah, I mean, see, that's that's all foam cord mashed together with hot glue, and that was dumb, uh, you know. But it kept it from completely mashing. I mean, it bent a little bit, but the thing is that the nose cone took it all and just completely obliterated the nose cone um, so it was just not very pleasant to fly because of its sluggishness I was like you know I'm just gonna go ahead and abandon this foam core it's not good to uh, use for airplanes it was quite heavy and not very pleasant at all now what I did for the Delta 3 I went back uh, to the uh, $1 foam and I just took better care with it. I got a, a new knife so the foam didn't rip up when I cut it, when I sliced it. That was the problem. My knife was so dull. I'll cover that in my next video. But, um, so the Delta 3 has a lot of refinements. I'll show you that next. Alright, so that's the Delta Mark II, also known as the Falcon Wing. A failure. <laughs> but I held on to it to show you guys. Alright, so that's that. Next video coming soon, I guess.